with Nick going down, I mean, what's your, with just another guy you lose on defense, how are you feeling right now in terms of just depth overall defensively? It just gets you a little younger. So, but uh, when Everett played in the game, he played well and, and uh, move next guy up and just keep rolling. How are you? What was I feel out there, no huddle and watching. I was watching that tape yesterday, and uh, obviously this isn't something new anymore. It's not, uh, but right. it's different, especially in the heat. Yeah, you know the the heat we can't control, so you just play with it, and you know, and, and uh, just see how it goes. That's why you know, our, our secondary has played quite a few snaps, you know, the last two games, and and uh, so we just uh, worry about things we can't control. And then you know the tempo will be like. You know the Texas Tech from the bowl game and that, and and uh, hurry to the line, and and uh, so it'll be a little faster than, than what we're normally used to. But uh, as in the past, sometimes it takes a couple series to get adjusted, just to how fast that that's going to go. And so you, you hope you can survive those first couple series and hang on and and move from there. So, how much would you say you've learned from Gary Patterson's staff over the years, and is it as much as anybody? You've been around in college football? Some games, we, the way we've played, he probably wouldn't want me to say that I learned anything from him because we haven't played it as well as he has. But, I mean, it's it's easily close to 90%. You know, I mean, it's, uh, one time I was down there eight of ten years in a row, I, you know, and and the first time I became defensive coordinator, their spring ball, I spent 10 of 15 practices down there for spring ball. and. Uh, uh, I've learned a tremendous amount from him and his staff. I have a tremendous amount of respect for the way that they they coach defense and, and um, how they do things. Is it? I mean, are, do the defenses line up similar? Is it? Is it? How, how if they watched TCU and then watched you, would people say it's very similar? Well, yeah, he he runs what he called a four-two-five with five defensive backs, where we're a four-three. So we use three linebackers, but when you go one back, it's all the same. You all line up the same, and so. Even though we're doing it out of four three four two five, there's a lot of the same principles still that we do that that uh, we we learn from from Gary. So uh, I mean, he's he's going to have a great understanding of of how we line up and what we play. But it still all comes back down to kids executing on game day and and playing hard and tackling. So, but uh, yeah, it, it's a it's a tough game. I haven't been able to go the last two years, and I've, I've missed that and and. Uh, because it's, it's a staff that we've always worked with as far as exchanging ideas on, on how to defend things. And, and uh, it's, it's been good, I think, for both of us. And now the fact, since the contract was signed, you know, have been able to do that. What was your biggest takeaway uh, from uh, Saturday? Did you come away a little put off by the way the, the second half unfolded? Uh, I, I look at it more as like the, uh, I thought the first half we, we played extremely well. I think there were two of eight on third downs. and. Everybody tries to make more of it. It's how well you play on third down. I mean, it really is. It's second half. I don't know if we stopped them on third down maybe once, you know, in the second half. And so uh, when you don't stop people on third down, you play a lot more snaps and have a more opportunity to, to score points. But I still think the value that's come out of that is that uh, each of the first two games is the last series or two. We've been able to play a lot of young kids. And because of our injury situation, that's going to pay benefits to us down the line because those kids are going to have to play. So, uh, um, yeah, we need to play in the second half better than what we have. But uh, at the same time, in the first half, I think that uh, uh, our kids have competed awfully hard. Chris, you feel good about the uh, turnovers you guys are creating? Yeah, here's the thing about that. You know, it's helped us, and, and you always try to get turnovers. But I don't want to be a bad defensive team that relies on turnovers to get us out of – out of situations, and that's what I preach to the kids. You know, is it? It'd be nice to get turnovers and play good defense the whole time. You know, and like in the first half, I mean, we played pretty good. TC hits quarterback, pops up in the air. Damian catches the ball. I mean, those are all good defense. And and then in in the second half, you know, the one uh, got us out when we were struggling in that. So uh, we got to have turnovers. It's all about getting the ball back for the offense. But at the same time, I don't want the turnovers to be something that covers up because we're not worth a damn on defense. So we have to play better on defense. I'm frustrated with the contain in the second half. I know you got pressure and then all of a sudden quarterback steps up and you know he's breaking and it makes it tough on the secondary. Level. Yeah, he made a couple scares, but you know, Demarius Travis falls down on the one. You know, I mean, that's one thing. You can't keep your fees a DB. You're in trouble. You know, and. And so he fell down on one, but so the quarterback scramble got us a little bit. And this week's quarterback is as good athlete as we're going to play at quarterback. So that that's a little bit of concern. Um, 
the, uh, the the thing though, it, again, a two hazards, two things is we didn't play as well on third down, and we had more missed tackles in the second half. And I've said all along, all these these teams that spread the field and hurry it up, they're getting their their people with yours in space. And if you miss tackles, you're in for a long day, and it won't be any different this week. Uh, this will be as fast a team offensively as we played since I've been here. When when you know they're going to put four wides out there. Most of them are former track players. Ran awfully well in the state of Texas, and so. Uh, you know, our strength, I think we run well enough in, in the secondary. I really do. But we're going to find out because this will be as fast a team as we play all year long. Coach, what's the that you brought to the table for a party like this? So yeah, it is. Do some things that you couldn't do in the past? Yeah, it really is. I agree. That's why I say it will be a good test for us. I mean, we have the secondary people to do it. Uh, you know, the other thing in the second half, you know, and, and uh, we got to coach better, but they're getting better as the young kids. You know, the, the D-line, that's the first time Gary Moore got to play in a game. And, and we move some people around. We, 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 the, the one thing that concerns me conditioning wise is we did take out some kids on the D line a little earlier than we did the first game, but that was because we just can't afford to lose another first round. Once the game has been decided, we can't afford to lose another, another D lineman right now. And so, but the, a lot of opportunities for the younger kids and, and uh, you know, hot stove theory is the best way to learn, in my opinion, is, you know, you get burnt, you learn how to, stay away from that mistake again. So uh, uh, hopefully they got enough of those in the last half last week that uh, we're ready to go with some of the younger kids. And they will. They'll play better. Coach, what's your evaluation of Steven Richardson so far? Played well. He did awfully well. And, and uh, um, he'll be fine. He'll hold up in the Big Ten season just fine. It's, uh, it's all a matter of getting the guys behind him ready to go. But I, I thought he did awfully well for his first game. What's his strength, Ben? His strength is his pad level because he's but he's just so strong and, and athletic. I mean, he can run. Tracy, there were several plays, like you said, that the athletic quarterback kind mm -hmm. of bought time, breaking mm -hmm. containment. Is that mm -hmm. one of the things that a young defensive line is going to – That's one of the hot stove theory deals, yeah. Yep, you know, is that, is that you know, you work on things and just say, hey, we'll let him scramble this way, but don't let him scramble that way, and then you get in the heat of the battle and – and that doesn't happen, you know. And so, obviously, we didn't coach it well enough, and and didn't get executed well enough. So uh, we got to do better, I guess, on both sides of it with the kids and us on that. Did you have three true freshmen uh, in the game at the same time on the line? I think so. I think so. You know, we, we did. And if we wouldn't have taken Steven out too, you know, we'd have had four. But yeah, I know that uh, that Andrew and Galen and Gary Moore was all out there you know, at one time. Probably so, yeah, yeah. But the good thing is, as I say again, is they all have athletic ability and they're all capable of playing. And I'd rather have that than than uh, three guys out there who can't play at all, you know, because of the injury. So at least they can play. You had five, as many as five or six total, right, um, at one time? Yeah, they're towards the end. You know, John's out there and, and Everett's out there and uh, Craig's out there. So at one time there would have been six true freshmen on the field at one time out there playing, you know. And so... There, there's going to be some uh, some learning experiences involved with that when that happens. But it's all about getting ready. Uh, we're we're going to try, like we always do, to, to win every game, just like this week. Our kids will be excited to play. we got to get ready for the Big Ten as, as we're doing that, and that's our goal with the younger kids because they're going to have to play. So, you know, we're, we're probably going through a little bit more of finding our identity with some of those younger kids than what I had thought we'd have to at this time of the year. You know, so uh, it's so different as Evans D lineman. We can't ask Steve necessarily to do everything that Scott did if, if he's not capable of. We got to find his strengths. We got to find Andrew's strengths. When those kids go in the game, we got to try to play to their their strengths. And so we're we're, we're working on it. We have time to, uh, for one or two more questions. Go ahead. With heading down to Texas, are you worried about the cramping uh, last week? Well, I think it's uh, we'll do everything we can to prevent it and and. Uh, I think it said something about right now they predict it's going to be in the 70s or 80s. We've been in that weather. That doesn't bother me. You know, if it would get into the 90s, it would bother me more probably at this time of year. Um, but we'll do everything we can um, uh, within our control to do that. And, and part of that is, is going to be playing more kids, you know, obviously. And, um, you know, so much of that depends on how the game goes. Are they going to have 10 or 12 play drives or are they going to be three to five? play drives, you know, so, so much of that. But uh, 
Uh, the good thing is it's not going to be in the 90s, so it's not going to be as big a... And, and with the game starting at 3 o'clock, it's going to cool down as the, as the day goes on, as opposed to... Uh, Everybody says, oh, 11 o'clock game. What's the problem with the 11 or noon game is the day goes on, it gets hotter and hotter as the game goes on. So, uh, uh, but uh, like I said, we don't have any control over, so uh, I'll, I'll let Ed and the training staff and our weight strength and conditioning staff, that, that's their job on the cramping part. Do we have one last question for Coach Plays? Okay. I just know that Patterson said that Joe will get some time. It's a possibility. I mean, you know, you're he played last week yeah. you know, they did the same thing you know most of those teams do the hurry up offenses is that I mean it's a style it's a philosophy and and I just don't see you know, a lot of changes uh, and, and here's the thing is that I you know me I can step here and coach Savell all of us we can step here and draw till three in the morning and draw a thousand plays the bottom line is this they played one ball game okay and they got an extra week off. They changed completely new offenses. They got up big early. The chances of us seeing everything they're going to do are slim and none. But at the same time, I'm not going to know everything they do. That's the nice thing about having an experienced secondary. We try to get them lined up, getting their feet in the ground. They know how to play football and, and let them play. So uh, uh, it, it's, a tough, it's a tough deal to prepare for. You'd rather have two games rather than one, especially with all new offense. But at the same time, It'll be a great learning experience for our kids, and, and we need to play a game like this. And, and, and I think they're excited to, to, to play this type of game. And, and um, as I said before, especially uh, got a tremendous amount of respect for, for what Gary and, and his staff have done there. And, and uh, you're going to see a, a beautiful stadium that they've made a commitment to, that, that they've built facility-wise and all that. And so uh, it, it'll be a good game for us. All right. Thank you, guys. Well, Coach Lineberg. Pretty good defensive line. They had an injury, but still they've had three pretty good ones uh, left and then some. Just tell me about their defensive line. Well, we're definitely going to have our hands full this week. Um, going to be the best group, uh, obviously, that we've faced so far this year. So, uh, you know, I think those guys understand that. We made that pretty clear on Sunday to them, even though we haven't watched a lot of film on them yet as a, as a group. Um, but uh, guys up front, will, uh, it's definitely going to be a step up for them. So uh, they're looking forward to the challenge, So. Matt, um, how getting sounds like you guys are going to getting two quarterbacks ready, obviously, just in case. Is it, how much of a challenge is that going into TCU? You always have to have two quarterbacks ready. I mean, you know, at, at, at this level, you've always got to be prepared for, for whatever's going to come your way in, in any given game. So, uh, you know, as I've said before, um, you know, with the young men that we have, it isn't a radical departure. It isn't as though you have in a completely different game plan for quarterback A, quarterback B, and quarterback C. You, uh, you put together the best one to, to go and try and beat TCU, and, and your guys work it all week. So, uh, you know, that's the way we've, we've done things for quite a while, and we'll continue to do it that way. Even Mitch's toughness, does, does your gut tell you that he'll be ready to go Saturday? Yeah, my gut, uh, the medical report, everything. You know, I mean, I, I'm a business-as-usual guy until told otherwise, and so uh, we're business-as-usual. We're in there preparing right now for practice, and expect to be at uh, full force. So, Matt, if, if at some point you need to go to Chris for an extended time, what, where's your confidence level in him right now? Well, you know what? I, I think one of the big things is, is any opportunity a young man has to play and go out and do some things and have some success, uh, you know, it's something you build on. And uh, I think he's able to build on that. He's a very confident kid, been successful in everything he's done. So in his mind, you know, hey, just – let me get out there, let me get under center, and let me do my thing. So you always like that from your quarterback, for sure. What have you thought of Chris just in the, in the time that you have seen him out there just on the field, too? Um, you know, I, I think there's a little bit there, uh, as with any young player, uh, getting his first chance to get out there and play. Uh, there's going to be some jitters and things, and he looks at film and says, geez, I could have done this a little bit better, could have done this a little differently. And, you know, he's no different than, than really in that regard than a fifth-year senior as far as learning from the film. There just isn't as much for a guy like him to draw from. So uh, he's able to take what he did and really, uh, you know, really, really be able to dive into that. And, and he has. And, you know, right away he, he uh, came up to me and said, oh, I got to, you know, got to work on this still. And, and so you like that when a, when a kid has that kind of awareness. How good is David Cobb right now? You know what? Uh, 
it's nice having him uh, having him in maroon and gold. That's for sure. I mean, he he's a kid that he makes you better as a, as a unit, and uh, that, that's something you really like uh, from a kid like like that at that position for sure. Matt, do you spend a little more time getting Jock ready this week then, or how does that go? Well, like I said, I, I think you just uh, you, you keep working your plan. You always got to be. You always if if you're not ready for for option B, C, and D, then, then you, haven't, you, know, you haven't done your homework, you haven't done what you're supposed to as a coach. So uh, we go into every week saying, okay, you know, how much, what percentage is the starter going to get, what percentage is the backup, what percentage is the number three, is it more mental, is it more physical? Um, you know, we try and keep that pretty, pretty standard as we go through. So uh, the nice thing is, uh, you know, Jacques, even though he's a kid that, that is a true freshman, he's been here through the spring or, you know, was at a lot of practices through the spring, was able to observe and then here in the summer. So uh, he's a little bit, little bit accelerated in that manner. And, and so that, that definitely helps in the process. His boys seem really exceptional to you given who he is. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, he's a pretty cool customer, which is, which is nice. He, he just goes out and does his thing, doesn't let a whole lot bother him. So. What's more difficult when you're coaching a quarterback, the X's and O's of the other team or keeping their confidence up? I think there's a balance between between both sides of that. Um, you know, each week you're going to see what you see on film, but at this level, uh, with with defensive coaches and and defensive coordinators, um, they'll have different things each week, like we try to offensively. So there's the hey, let's get down what we know, let's take care of the known, and then let's try and prepare as well as we can, and 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 be able to. Uh, be able to initially survive and then thrive in the unknown. And, and so that, that's always that balance. And, and sometimes a kid's confidence will get a little shook, you know, early on in a ball game or in a season with, with all the different things they're seeing. And then there's kind of that deep breath moment where it's like, okay, I kind of got this thing figured out and here we go. Well, I, I think a lot of it had to do with, with the fact that you have a lot of confidence in and a guy, and you're, you're turning around and giving him the ball, and he's, he's churning out what he was. Um, you know that that uh, that definitely changes how you approach things, and uh, so that was that was important. But uh, you know, as like last uh, uh, non-conference schedule, you know, we don't want to just be relying on the pass, or I mean, excuse me, on the run. We want to be able to throw the football. But given the way that game worked out and what David was doing, um, you know, we always talk about. When you get a guy sweating and get a guy going, um, you know, until that until that water runs dry, you know, stomp all the mud out of it. So, uh, you know, that that's kind of what we did with David on Saturday. Coach, at the same time, uh, Max Williams is one catch. How important is it for you to get him more involved? I, that's always, uh, you know, I've talked a bunch about it since the end of last season. You know, we we have more young men we feel are playmakers, and so the important thing is is finding ways to get him the football. And, and so uh, there were some things that we had for Max that we actually ran, and uh, it, was, it was taken away. And so, uh, you know, some other reads had to be made, some other, uh, other throws had to, had to occur. So, um, you know, when you throw it 11 times, uh, you know, we, we, we had him targeted a few more times, and we probably need to continue to, to up that percentage because the one time we were able to get him uh, broke free. Uh, it was a, it was a it was a big play. So uh, that and and uh, uh, getting Donovan Jones going early, um, continuing to to put Berkeley Edwards in position where he can make plays, and then still making sure that a guy like David Cobb is is getting the carries and the touches he needs to uh, to do his thing. So uh, it's it's a challenge, but it definitely beats the alternative as far as trying to find ways to do that. Man, you guys have been alternating at fullback from game one to game two. Is that something you expect to keep going uh, throughout the season, or would you like to find that guy that is going to become more like Mike Henry? You know, I, I think that eventually maybe one of those guys will, uh, will, will jump up, but uh, uh, neither one really has, and neither one's fallen off either. So, uh, you know, when, when you have uh, production from two guys and it's very similar and you're in a position where you can alternate them and keep them fresh and let them get out there and, and get involved. It's, uh, it's something that until one guy either jumps way ahead or one guy falls way off, uh, I don't think that'll, that'll change necessarily anytime soon. Did Jones ever play quarterback for a series or a package given Becker? No comment. <laughs> no, I, you know, you've got, 
you've got KJ May, you've got you've got Donovan, you know, you've you've got some different uh, some different things. Those guys who have been quarterbacks, high school quarterbacks, and now are, are playing receiver and know our offense. So, um, you know, those conversations come up quite a bit as you go through uh, the course of a week. So, I mean, you had Ben Lauer in there and rotating now. What's uh, what was your evaluation? Uh, you know what? I I, I think that. Uh, uh, both, I, I thought Jonah played better in game two than he did game one, and I think maybe some of that had to do with uh, uh, not playing the entire game. Um, you know, uh, and getting back into it, um, they played pretty similar. There wasn't one, kind of like in the fullback vein, there wasn't one that jumped out off the charts good or off the charts bad. So uh, uh, I liked our product production, excuse me, overall from the right tackle spot over the first game. So uh, uh, you'll see more of, more of the same. Um, I feel like that's uh, uh, getting guys out there and keeping them fresh and, and keeping them going as opposed to just uh, trying to get everything you can out of one guy and him dying at the end, Wilton at the end. We'll uh, take one last question if there is one. So if you, if you had to use option B, C, or D at quarterback, would you be more inclined to really ease them into the game or might you go for shock value or something like that? Long bomb first play. So make sure you get that. Make sure you get that out. No, I. You know what? I, we don't. We don't look at it as oh, oh my goodness. You know, I, it is. There's a bigger picture game plan that we put together to to like I said to move the ball and score points against uh, an opponent. This week it happens to be TCU, and uh, you, you don't necessarily want to go. Oh my goodness, he he. You know, we need to really pull back here because he can't do this or that or that. I, I think you just continue to to run your game plan and, and do what you need to at whatever point uh, uh, somebody else is, is coming in to, to play for you.